and welcome to Inside Solent, our monthly look at the university's latest news, projects and events. I'm Emma Ray, Head of PR and Communications. And I'm Amy Sutton, Graduate Associate for the School of Business, Law and Communications, and we'll be your hosts this month. In this programme, Ashley Stout learns about a student project looking to treat autism through computer gaming. We find out about an engineering lecturer's role on the British Mars lander Beagle 2. But first, I recently got to chat with one of my music idols. Craig David dropped in this month to talk to our students about his career, the Brits and the future of the music industry. And I had a little chat with him afterwards. I ain't felt nothing like this, like this. I ain't felt nothing like this, like this. There's so much going on down here, do you know what I mean? In, in, within the university, having a music suites and people can do their, their, their music doctorates and kind of go that route, I didn't have that when I was growing up. So I think supporting that as well here has been amazing. Craig also shared insight of some of the biggest changes he's seen since starting out in the music industry. The biggest change is how people distribute music. So the way in which you'll find music now is very accessible. But the downside, I think, sometimes is that it's too easy to just uplift, upload music and not do the back work that kind of allows you to get to that point. When I didn't have that, it allowed me to go out and do performances and do, do shows and make all my mistakes out there. So when it comes to performing now, I feel very comfortable. There's a lot of kids who are putting records out that when it comes to doing the shows now they're like uh what do i do and i think that's the biggest difference between the two you know what i mean if you missed craig this time round, don't forget you can catch him in concert at the Aegeus ball on the 1st of september in other news the school of maritime science and engineering has welcomed a new member to the team Meet Baxter, our very own Solent robot. The computer control device was delivered unboxed and brought to life in the engineering department this February. Baxter is now up and running, meeting students and greeting visitors on open days. And we'll be finding out more about what he gets up to in the coming months. Now from engineering robotics to learner analytics. The university has been awarded £49,000 by the Higher Education Funding Council for England to support student learning and engagement. By employing learner analytics, the RISE project will focus on boosting student participation in academic activities, adapting teaching strategies and giving staff and students access to more educational benefits. Thanks to an exciting new university partnership with imaging company Canon UK, one of our photography students recently won some brand new top of the range equipment. Congrats to George Waring who impressed the judges and snapped up the goods with his picture entitled Space Invader. We now go from photographic imagery to virtual reality and learn how one student is creating a computer game to help treat autism. Once a futuristic concept, the mainstream use of virtual reality is now becoming a reality itself. Solent lecturers like Aaron Langmead have recognized this and are giving students the ability to use this tech as part of their projects. So pre-production conceptual was a brief which was given to the third years and basically it asked them to explore a political, personal or social message that they wanted to kind of uh, talk about. And they look into these different areas and then come up with an idea that uh, uses the gaming medium or the, you know, kind of interactive uh, in experience. For third year student Ashley Walton, this meant creating a VR game to help treat children with autism. So the basics of the project is to uh, put a, the, the individual with autism into uh, stressful social situations, whether that be on public transport or the idea that I've come up with is in a supermarket and increase the stress levels uh, when they're uh, doing everyday tasks. So to increase the stress levels for, uh, for the individuals, it'd be uh, adding more people, uh, maybe having NPCs within the level, so non-playable characters, uh, talk, to, talk to the player or maybe bump into them or get into their personal space when they're, uh, for example, shopping. Although Ashley is still in the process of building the game, he's looking forward to the day he can bring it to life. I really just want to help people. I want to find new ways to uh, interact within the field of health and wellbeing through interactive media, really kind of add a new spin to uh, the help that people receive. Once his project is finished, Ashley plans to pitch the game to experts in the health and wellbeing industry to use in clinical studies. For Inside Solent, I'm Ashley Stout. Our students aren't the only ones working on futuristic projects. In this month's What's Up Doc, we meet Tychonus Michaelidis to find out more about his project. 
Tychinus joined Solent after completing his PhD on sensor technology and how vibrations can be used as a mean of communication. He's recently started work on a new project in this field. Currently I'm working on a project uh, with two dancers where I'm using vibrations as a means of communication between the two. So uh, dancer A will do a movement and dancer B will sense that movement. The idea of the project is that dancer A will do a particular movement, so move the right hand in a particular way, and then through, by gathering the data through accelerometers and other sensors, we can uh, translate that into vibrations and then provide to dancer B in order to sense the same movement. Dancers were an obvious choice when it came to finding support for his project. I'm using dancers in this project simply because they've got more experience and understand movement. So dancer was the obvious uh, kind of way forward you know, to identify how we can, how they communicate between the two. The aim is for the dancers to sense the movement without seeing each other. In a later stage, what we're trying to achieve is to separate the two dancers and see if they're able to understand the movement of each other. So even if one dancer is in one room and the other dancer is in another room, they'll be able to understand the movement and basically communicate between the two. For Inside Solent, I'm Sue Montgomery. Now we meet another academic whose work is literally out of this world. Kelly Ward talks to engineering lecturer Helena Twig, who in 2003 helped launch the British lander module Beagle 2 on Mars. Beagle 2 was a British Mars lander. Its mission was to land on the surface of Mars and test for signs of life, past or present. Helena Twig was working within the research and development team who would make the radar altimeter, which would trigger the airbags and help with a safe landing. It launched from uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on, uh, in June 2003 and it was due to land on Mars on Christmas Day 2003, uh, at which point it was due to open, the solar panels would fold out and at the bottom of the solar panels was the communications antenna which would then talk back to the orbiting spacecraft and send the signal back to us. Despite numerous test runs, no signal was ever received after launch and it was assumed that Beagle 2 had not landed safely and was therefore a failed mission. We knew that it had been ejected from the orbiting spacecraft that had taken it to Mars because we'd seen pictures of that, but we didn't have any data about it travelling to the surface. We only knew that it had successfully landed if it gave us a signal from the surface of Mars and that was the signal that just never came. The Beagle 2 project was led by a group of British academics and headed by Professor Colin Pillinger. At the beginning of January 2015, a press conference was held announcing that 11 years after launching, it had in fact been found in one piece and just three kilometres from its predicted landing spot, meaning that entry, descent and landing system had worked after all. And I do feel that we owe it to him and we owe it to the engineers who, for 11 years, didn't know what had happened, thought they'd gone wrong somewhere. Uh, to actually use the same technology, use the stuff that we worked on to get something to land on Mars because it works and because it was, you know, done on a shoestring and we knew that it was theoretically going to work but we had no idea whether it would actually work in practice. Now we do know um, and it would be great to do it again. It really would. This is Kelly Ward reporting for Inside Salem. It's now time to find out what events are going on this March. We kick off with an industry insight session from Cruise Industry Leaders Carnival on the 2nd of March. To celebrate International Women's Day on the 8th of March, we're hosting various activities across campus. On 22nd of March, Sophie Cook will be coming in to talk about her experience of being the first transgender female to work for a Premier League football club. And it's Red Nose Day on the 24th of March, so we'll be revealing our plans to support the annual charity event very soon. For a full list of times and venues to all of our activities throughout the month of March, visit our events page on our website to find out more. Researchers from Wasatch Maritime Academy recently presented the final report of a three-year study looking at long-term seafarers fatigue. And this was to delegates at the International Maritime Organization. So we sent Sarah Jane Wareham along to find out more. It's well proven that fatigue can result in long-term physical and mental health issues. 
Project Martha researched this in a maritime context to investigate the effects of fatigue at sea. Professor Mike Barnett from Solent University presented key findings from the report to delegates at the International Maritime Organization in London last month. So this was all about longer term fatigue and really the main things were that everybody suffers from longer term fatigue as the voyage goes on. Captains more than the other members of the crew. We also discovered that um, there were changes in mood and what we've called social cohesion. So we were asking in questionnaires every week how they were getting on with their colleagues. How were they feeling? Were they getting depressed? Were they getting moody? And those results have indicated that over long periods that people's um, well-being, yes, is beginning to deteriorate. As well as interviews and weekly diaries, the study also used ACTI watches to register volunteers' periods of activity and sleep while at sea. Professor Claire Pekjan from Warsash Maritime Academy helped analyse the data. There were three significant findings that came out of the ACTI watch data. The first was that over the period of time that we asked people to wear the ACTI watches, um, was that there was a gradual reduction in the amount of sleep that they got in each 24-hour period over the course of the time that we studied them. The shift workers were getting significantly less sleep than the other people. And the third finding was that the most senior people on board, like the captain, had very fragmented sleep, so they might be having periods of sleep that were highly interspersed. Captain Cuba Samansky from Intermanager, the organisation responsible for circulating the report, urged industry to take notice of the findings. We can get together and the Intermanager together with Solent now goes around the world, we do the workshops and try to disseminate, present the results, show them what it is, can they become a part of a solution. And when I say they, it is ship offices, ship industry as you call it. The IMO is looking at the report as it discusses revising its guidelines on fatigue at sea. This is Sarah Jane Wareham for Inside Solent. For a copy of the Martha report, please get in touch by emailing us at news at solent.ac.uk. We now go over to the Vice Chancellor to get the latest sector updates and university news. Well, as always, there's lots going on. Uh, January saw the closing date for students to apply through UCAS for university entry. So that brings a particular focus on student numbers. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity for us to update with regard to Solent's position. So there's an article on the website. It talks about the improvements we've made, uh, great progress that we've made in terms of student progression and achievement. It also talks about the growth in numbers around postgraduate, part-time and European, all very pleasing, and just gives the overall picture of the state of the uh, student numbers at Solent University. To support that, we've had uh, some applicant days running recently. We've got more forthcoming. These are really important events in the life of the university, and I particularly thank all staff and colleagues who are involved in putting on such great events in showcasing the university and attracting students. And of course, the government have recently published its uh, industrial strategy, uh, which provides real opportunities for universities with a real world focus like Solent. And we are working with organisations and partners to see how we can help to address issues relating to higher level skills. And can you tell us what's been going on inside the university? Well, I've already mentioned the applicant days and all the work that's going on to encourage students to uh, join us in the Solent community. Um, but we're at the moment in the middle of our second enrichment week of the academic year. This time we're focusing on employability, colleagues from Solent Futures and others working really hard in the attempt to ensure that our students get their dream job or start up their own business or move on to uh, further study. We uh, have had a number of awards. We won an Eco Campus Gold Award for our continuing work in terms of uh, sustaining the environment. We've also received funding for a number of projects, including research and uh, other activities uh, like learning and teaching. And we've had a, a continuing sporting success. And our men's cricketers won the indoor championships and our women's cricketers came third in the same competition uh, in the British universities and colleges sport. And finally, of course, the NSS continues. We've had a great response to date. And I would encourage all those students who haven't yet responded to please do so Come and tell us what you think about life at Solent. And now over to the sports desk for a roundup of February sporting news. Thanks Emma. Lots coming up including Team Solent men's football team 
who are just one game away from playing at St Mary's Stadium and athletes from a range of sports competed in the University National Championships. But first, Sonnet have established themselves as one of the best cricketing universities in the country. Sonnet men's team are now national indoor champions. They beat Northumbria in the final at Headingley. The ladies cricket team reached the semi-finals of the same event. On to the National Bucks Championships. Last month, Team Sonnet sent scores of athletes to the event in Sheffield, with many finishing as finalists. Leah Stevenson finished ninth in the women's triple jump, while Laura Edwards got to the final of the women's pole vote. In the men's, Matthew Watson finished joint seventh in the high jump final, while Ash Buckman narrowly missed out on a medal in the triple jump. In the pool, Jessica Davies finished seventh in the final of the women's open 50 metre backstroke. Finally, on to football, and Team Solon are just one game away from their third consecutive Sydney's Wessex League Cup final. They will face Hamble Club in the semi finals on the 1st of March. That's all from me, but don't forget to check out Solent Sport website and social media pages for their latest fixtures and results. And most importantly, get behind Team Solent. Goodbye for now. And that's all we've got time for this month. So join us again next time for more news, views and events from Inside Solent. Goodbye and thank you for watching. <laughs>